Hey guys, it's Shelby, otherwise known as Shelbizzle here on YouTube, and today I just wanted to have an open and honest conversation about some things that I really don't like about the zero waste movement. Hopefully it can change your perspective on things, make you think a little bit differently about the movement than maybe some other people have told you to think about it if that makes sense, no shade. Now today I have a lot of opinions to share, as I'm sure you know if you've seen my videos before. I always have a lot to talk about, but I can only talk about kind of my perception of the movement, so I would love to hear if you guys have any perceptions of the movement, because I think it really depends on who you started following in the zero waste movement, how you learned about it in the first place, and just you know where you come from and what you have, what's accessible to you, et cetera, can really change your perception of what zero waste is, right? One of the main focal points of this video is that there are other things going on in the world that have to do with the environment that are probably more important than just talking about plastic waste and our solid waste problems. So this video is brought to you by Swell Investing. We'll talk more about them throughout the video, but they are offering my viewers $50 to start investing in sustainable things today. If you want to go ahead and jump ahead, you can click the link at the top of the description. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is something you might have heard me talk about before, but something that really gets under my skin, and it's that zero waste as a term, the term zero waste, was meant to be used for businesses. So in ways like Walmart was meant to take on the term zero waste because we produce waste in our home, right? However much waste you produce in your home, picture it in your mind, and then picture that every time you take out that bag of trash, upstream there is 70% more waste coming from businesses. And the whole point of zero waste originally, when the term originated, when it was first introduced into society, was meant to be so that Walmart could reduce their waste because that actually has a much bigger impact and they actually have a lot more power to change the way we look at waste, the way we create waste, the way we dispose of waste. They truly have the power. Us as consumers have the choice every single time we spend our money with our dollars whether or not we want to support said business because of what practices they are using. But one of the things that I really have a problem with with the zero waste movement is it's been completely turned and like flipped on its head to just be our responsibility. There is so much more content, discussion, hashtags, I mean anything you wanna name, products, companies, anything you wanna name, targeting consumers to make sure they feel the burden of changing our entire societal structure to produce less waste. And I'm in no way saying that we don't play a role. Like I said, voting with your dollar is always important. The companies you choose to give your money to, it's important. What else is important is choosing more sustainable packaging. It's important, it makes a difference, but it is nothing compared to what zero waste was meant to be and nothing makes me more frustrated than when I get the emails or the DMs from you guys saying, oh, I created waste in this way, I can't figure out a waste around this situation. You would be surprised how many people come to me and tell me how sorry they feel for their medical waste because there's been so much guilt put onto the consumer to feel like they're the ones responsible for this waste when in reality, you're limited to what options you have that you're given by customers and I made customers companies. I made a video not too long ago, well actually it was like a year ago, when Emmy from Sustainably Vegan first launched the low impact movement. I made a video about why I'm not zero waste anymore, but my second issue with the term zero waste is that it is the most impactful, most jarring way to present an eco-friendly lifestyle. If you don't have a trash jar, you will not get nearly as much media attention, nearly enough impact. You cannot have nearly as big of an impact if you consider yourself low waste or you don't have the trash jar. My second problem with zero waste is that you have to basically go to the extremes to attract a lot of people just to see what you're doing. Those two segued really fast. I didn't expect my segue to go that quickly, but basically I'm just talking off the top of my head with some issues that I have with the zero waste movement. So 
It's weird though, because I feel like to get the media attention, to grab people's attention, to get into this movement, you have to have a trash jar, but that bleeds into my third problem with the zero waste movement, which is the trash jar seems so intimidating. So whenever you see someone holding up a trash jar, maybe on Instagram, or maybe you saw it on the ma in a magazine, like whatever it is, wherever you first saw it, it was like, whoa, this person's creating that little amount of waste in a whole year, that's insane, that's so crazy. I wanna learn more. But the more you dig into it, the more you learn about it, the more you see the perfect aesthetics, zero waste kitchens, the more you hear that you have to shop in bulk to live this lifestyle, the more you realize that it might cost more, it will take significantly more time, the more you realize you might not have access to most of the things that these people are talking about, the easier it is for you to just go, I can't do it and I give up. So. There's, it's completely a two-sided system where I feel like you have to have the trash jar to grab the attention, but you have to make it look accessible because if we just scare everybody off by making them think that they have to be perfect to do anything, like, I, my constant struggle. <laughs> Probably my biggest problem with the zero waste movement is that I don't think solid waste, plastic waste, I don't think any of those things are the most important or most impactful way to save our planet, to help the planet, to help our natural ecosystems, the natural processes that we rely on. I don't think that reducing your plastic waste is the best way to save the planet. And that's probably the first time I've ever outright said it like that. Um, and it might seem weird because judging by my content, you might think that I do think that, but I don't. I think the most important thing to do is to do the best you can in every aspect of your lifestyle. And that's not as sexy to say, it's not as easy to explain as don't buy plastic, but what I mean by that is literally every purchase you make makes a difference. You know, whenever elections come around, everyone's hyped up, everyone's talking about the election, oh, the election, oh, who are you voting for? Oh, we shouldn't vote for that person because they support this or they support that. But every single day, you make purchases that are voting. Your money and where you spend it has so much more power than almost anything you do. I truly believe that. And that's my problem with zero waste is we focus so much on plastic pollution instead of a whole overall picture of how to make our natural ecosystem better. Which talking about the whole circle brings it full circle for why I chose to have Swell Investing as a sponsor for this video. And it's because, like I said, we vote with our dollars. It is the most powerful thing we can do. And Swell Investing allows you to invest directly into only sustainable things for our future. So they have six pillars that you can invest in, and one of them is zero waste. But it's not from the consumer standpoint, it's helping helping companies become zero waste. It's the infrastructure of zero waste. Obviously that's really important. They also have disease eradication, clean water, renewable energy, and other pillars that you would feel good about investing your money into. It's a really great concept because if you think of what you're investing your money into, you may not be aware of where your money is going, such as my personal 401k. I have no ability to decide where that money goes to. So I could quite literally be investing in things like big oil and have no control over it because I don't have control over those investments. But with Swell Investing, you can make sure that where you're voting with the most amount of your dollars, your personal investments, are going to things that you would actually support. Maybe your true passion does lie within zero waste, the true form of zero waste, an industrial overhaul of the way our society creates and produces waste. You can specifically invest into those sort of structures with Swell Investing. And if you can't invest in the biggest companies in the world who are doing zero waste, because maybe per share it's just way too much money for you, you can invest with as small of amounts as $50 on Swell. And they're going to give you $50 to get started. So if you want to start investing in things that can change the world in ways that might be more impactful than just your personal plastic waste, make sure you check out Swell because they're going to give you $50 to get started at the top of the description. So a lot of these points rolled off my tongue a lot faster than I thought they would. I actually thought that I was going to go slowly point by point and explaining every issue.
issue that I have with the zero waste movement, but I just get so frustrated because I, I don't want zero waste as a person to seem like the end all be all to saving the planet because people sometimes argue with me about this point that if we reduce our solid waste, then there's less greenhouse gases going into the atmosphere from landfill. And that's truly such a small fraction of where our greenhouse gases are coming from. You're completely ignoring the transportation industry as well as the animal agriculture industry. And those two things are so much more impactful to make changes in than your single use plastic. So my biggest overall issue with zero waste is that it has been transformed to the consumer. I already said that, but my closing statement that I wanna give you guys in this video is to make sure that you don't ever feel like if you can't make a change, if you can't do something perfect, that it's not your fault and you shouldn't feel completely guilty about it. I want you to do the best that you can do. I want you to vote with your dollar towards things that you think are important, towards bulk shopping. That is important. I'm not diminishing it. But some people don't have bulk shopping. And that doesn't mean that you can't make changes, make a difference, actually have an impact on this planet without having zero plastic waste. As a matter of fact, I personally believe that you can buy things in plastic on a consistent basis, but still be voting with your dollar to better the planet in ways like Gardein. I obviously, uh, if you saw my zero waste kitchen tour, I'll link it right here. Part of it was my pantry and my fridge. If you saw that, you saw that I still buy Gardein skillet meals. They come in plastic. I personally believe that supporting vegan companies is the future. To get more people off of animal products and to reduce our waste in that way because there's so much more also than just greenhouse gases from animal agriculture. There's also the runoff that comes from it that is causing dead zones in our oceans and completely destroying the natural habitat there that humans need to survive. I think people forget about that fact. But anyway, going back to what I was saying, I think supporting vegan companies like that is important because the more accessible those things are, the more I give money to those things, the more of a demand I create, the more of those become readily available to people and the less animal products we're able to eat. Like average people are able to trade their skillet meals that are not vegan for skillet meals that are vegan. And yeah, it comes in plastic and I have no shame about showing you that in my freezer because I truly think that that is making a bigger impact than other alternatives. And people ask me that sometimes, what's more important, something being vegan or something being package free. And I always say, I think vegan is more important because I truly believe that. Okay, I know I said that, that was my closing statement, but I have one more thing to say. If you didn't know, I have a podcast. <laughs> I have not been super consistent with it, to be honest. It's hard to be consistent at multimedia things. Um, but the people I do interview on there, um, I've interviewed like Tom Sazaki from TerraCycle, the creator of Loop, which is creating reusable packaging for things like Tide. Tide is going to have things in reusable packaging. Pantene is going to have stuff in reusable packaging. Um, and while there are definitely issues with that system, I completely agree that it's not perfect. Um, I've interviewed so many companies, CEOs of companies, creators of recycling systems, creators of sustainable like uh, ThreadUp, I interviewed them. All of these people I'm talking to, CEOs of sustainable companies and CEOs of even non-sustainable companies doing sustainable things, Every single one of them, when I ask them why they're doing it, why they made the switch, why this is working out, they say because consumers are demanding it. So please do not ever tell me that consumers don't have power over this market. I know they do. And I know from personally speaking with the people making these changes that we are the reason they're making these changes. Please do not ever think that what you're doing doesn't, I'm getting chills. Please do not ever think that what you're doing isn't making a difference because we absolutely are. Do not give up. Do not make yourself feel guilty for not being perfect. Do everything in your power to do what you believe is best for this planet and we'll all make a difference together. So, okay, I hope that was inspirational to you. I hope that I opened your mind to some things. Share this with a friend so that they understand that they don't have to be perfect to get started. That is my entire message. I hope that you all understand where I'm coming from when I make videos like this. I just want more people to be able to understand that we are making a difference and you absolutely can. Okay, so I'm gonna do some shout outs because I've been slacking on those a little bit recently. Let's see who we've got here. I've actually gotten a lot of tags recently. Thank you to everyone who tags me on Instagram. I love giving you shout outs and I love seeing what you guys are doing. So, okay, let's see what we've got here. Oh, someone made my toilet tabs. So what is your name? 
Oh, I don't know how to say it, but I'll put it on the screen. Thank you so much for making my toilet tabs. I hope they work out for you. If you guys want that recipe, I'll link it in the description. Zero Waste Canada. Oh, she's got a really good Instagram page. You guys could go follow her if you live in Canada. She placed a thread up order, uh, which thread up is amazing. I also interviewed them for the podcast. The episode should be coming out soonish. So thank you for tagging me. Okay, this is really important and I really wanna give her a shout out for sure. Emily, she is talking in this post about how many resources it takes to create clothing. So it's really important to think about the upstream things as opposed to just the downstream things. That should have been a really big point in this video. It's the overall theme of this video to think about things other than just your ending waste, but to think about things ahead of time, all the resources that go into creating everything you buy. And that's what this post is about. So I love that, Emily. Thank you for tagging me. Oh my God, what is your name? Call me Krusty Bread. Okay. The Suze and the Banshees. I'm just gonna put her profile right here. I always do that anyway, but um, she redid her room She redid it uh, her living room with baskets on the wall. If you guys don't know my basket walls right here I have a video about when I put that together too. I'll link it right here But I inspired her to redo some decor in her home with a basket wall. So that's super cool I love that you guys share this with me It, it truly puts a smile on my face when I log on to Instagram and instead of scrolling through the fake photoshopped versions of aesthetic zero waste kitchens I can see what you guys are tagging me in and the actual changes that real people are out there making so thank you I always love it so so much tag me in anything you're doing and you can be my next shout out in my videos so don't forget to check out Swell. I'm so excited to have learned about them. I think they're an important resource in actually putting our dollars towards making a difference in the future. So make sure you check them out. At least the free $50 to get started is pretty cool. Also, really, really quick. Last time we talked about Swell, a lot of people said they were disappointed. They only had an ISO app. The ISO app actually launched literally last time I made my video. It was the day that they launched their app. I posted that video. So I'm not sure if they're on Android yet, but you can log on to your browser. There's a link for the browser in the description as well you can use a browser to start investing and it doesn't have to be on an app if that makes sense okay so remember until next time you guys you cannot do all the good that the world needs but the world needs all the good that you can do bye guys